I feel a connection to the world which is underwater, which is very alien to the world above water. My name is uh, Dimitar Sasov. I'm uh, working on many topics from uh, stellar physics and exoplanets to uh, the big question. Is there life out there in the galaxy? And how does chemistry transform to life? The habitats uh, that we see in an aquarium actually tell us a lot about um, the origin of life. What would uh, the early Earth uh, in the deep past look like? Shallow seas, more likely lakes which are closed, so the water tends to concentrate a lot of the chemicals. This is the image that you could uh, call the prebiotic soup. What we know for sure is that there was no oxygen. That makes the chemistry both of the air and of the water different. Iron was very common. It literally accumulated on the bottom of seas and lakes, and quite often as the iron oxide called magnetite. So a lot of those lake bottoms were, in fact, slightly magnetized because of the magnetite. Today and in the near past, uh, creatures small and big have the same mirror symmetry. Just look at the perfect outlines of fish. But deep inside, at the molecular level, the mirror world is eliminated and only one uh, set of molecules exists. We call this homochorality. We can describe chorality as a reflection in a mirror. My name is Fulkan Öztürk, and I'm a physicist. I am quite interested in art. Narcissus is described by Ovidius, the famous Roman poet, in his book Metamorphosis. In the story, there's a chap called Narcissus who is full of himself. No one is good enough for him. One day, he gazes upon his reflection on a pond, and he really likes what he sees. <laughs> And suddenly, he falls in love with himself. People may think that he was foolish and he is narcissistic, but the truth is, he fell in love with his mirror image. And actually, it's not him. It's his opposite chirality. Objects are said to be chiral if the mirror image of one of the objects is superimposable on the other one, just as our hands. We have a right hand and we have a left hand. What is chirality? In chemistry, that is the fact that many molecules which have a number of atoms are formed in both a left-handed and right-handed version. The two are mirror images of each other. If you put your right hand in front of a mirror, the image of your right hand will look like it's as if it's a left hand. Your hands are chiral. And that's where the word comes from, actually, from Greek. Like, chiros means hand in Greek. And molecules, chiral molecules, exhibit this property as well. If you look at a reflection mirror image of a right-handed sugar, it will appear as a left-handed sugar. And although these two forms have the same close chemical form, similar arrangements of atoms with respect to each other, the structure is has a different symmetry. And in biology, the symmetry leads to different functions. From bacteria to humans, nucleic acids like RNA and DNA are all right-handed. And amino acids are predominantly left-handed again in all living systems. They're produced in exactly 50-50 percentage from normal chemical reactions. But life polymers, from DNA to RNA to the proteins, 
cannot really function if they are a mess of left-handed and right-handed molecules. They have to be uh, clearly homochiral. But you need to do something very special to break that symmetry. It is still a big mystery of how this happened at the origin of life. And our work is trying to answer that question. So we are in the place that we have done most of the experiments. I spend most of my time here. I would say I live here almost. I slept here, yeah. <laughs> the question is like, what broke that symmetry on early Earth? And it has to be a physical mechanism. It has to be an environmentally imposed bias because chemistry by itself, standalone, cannot produce homochiral molecules. Polarized light breaks the chiral symmetry, but it was not available on early Earth. What was available on early Earth that was polarized through its spin, like light, were electrons. And magnetic surfaces have electrons with well-defined spin orientation because they form under Earth's geomagnetic field. So what that means is Earth provides a bias that is embedded in magnetic minerals that can bias chemistry on the early Earth. And the most magnetic and the most commonly occurring magnetic mineral on Earth was magnetite. The simple experiment we constructed was basically a replica of a magnetite lake that would be available on early Earth. It had magnetite deposits on its bottom. It had a prebiotic soup on the top. And that's what we kind of recreated in the lab. It has been found that a certain breed of crystals can propagate chirality. But if there is no bias in the environment, although individual crystal units can propagate their own chirality, the outcome overall is an equal mixture. We first found a molecule that has that special crystallization property, and the molecule we found was RAO. It's a precursor to RNA. And we first created a 50-50 mixture of RAO. That mixture was then placed on a magnetite surface that is externally magnetized, so the polarization was in one direction, on average. And then we just let those REO molecules crystallize on the magnetic surface. And after they crystallize, we filtered the solution out and collected the crystals and analyzed their chiral properties. What we found was, depending on the polarization direction, we either got predominantly one chirality or the other, and the chirality we got flipped when we flipped the polarity direction. So what is the mechanism? 10 years ago, roughly, people discovered this unusually strong effect that established the interaction between chiral molecules and electron spin. And that effect is named chirally induced spin selectivity. What they discovered is chiral molecules strongly interact with electron spin and filter out electrons based on their spin direction. And we can think of this in an intuitive way using helical staircases. So now imagine two people with spin, like they're rotating just as an electron. Who will reach the top floor faster? The one whose rotation direction matches with the chirality of the hel helical staircase. We utilize this effect in reverse. We have electrons on a surface that are polarized and they interact with molecules that are either left-handed or right-handed in equal amounts. And the ones that more efficiently interact with the polarized surface are the ones that more efficiently crystallizing on the surface. And then I happily sent the data and my conclusions to Demitar, my advisor, and John Sutherland, who is a chemist and who is working on Origins of Life and is also part of this project. And then he got back to us and he said, well, you bloody well done cracked it. 
<laughs> so maybe that primordial soup with the magnetite pot under it uh, was actually the right thing for life. We always had huge questions as humans. We call them the big questions of science. What is the origin of the universe? What is the origin of life? What is the origin of consciousness? When I can look at the sky, at the Milky Way in particular, it's almost like a vertical upside down. And in this case, you're looking up, and yet it feels the same way. And I know, because I'm an astronomer, that this is actually a galaxy, a spiral galaxy. And I can almost transform myself into seeing the whole thing. And then it becomes like very, very homey to be in a place which has been there for billion years before and will go for hundreds of billions of years in the future. Could have I imagined many years ago that I'll be in a basement lab making chemistry experiments? The answer is no, I hated chemistry. I love it now. How does chemistry become life? Can it happen on any rocky planet? And if that's the case, why don't we go out and try to discover it and find out and explore it and maybe meet our neighbors? <laughs>